Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me on this Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. It's about 2.33 p.m. Eastern Time as I speak. Guys, thank you as we continue this daily devotional, stand strong out of our daily bread. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. Today's title, Job Envy. Job Envy. I think there's a lot in the Bible that talks about envy. Um, guys, I, I went ahead... The author chose for our study of scriptures, Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 4, verses 17 through 32. I read those verses by themselves. If you would just want to read 17 through 32, go ahead. But I'm going to highlight that entire chapter on the description of this video. So Numbers, chapter 4, it took me, I think it took me maybe two, three minutes to read the whole thing. And it made sense. I read it slowly. I allowed it to speak to me. So now I'm looking forward to reading this devotional to see what the author is going to say. So, uh, yeah, those those verses by themselves and then our lead off verse by itself doesn't really speak volume unless you know the whole details of what's going on. Plus, it's the Lord speaking. So that never hurts either. But um, our lead off verse is, uh, I'm sorry, Numbers. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at Romans from yesterday. Numbers chapter 4, verse 19. And the word of God says, and this is the Lord speaking to Moses so that they may live and not die when they come near the most holy things. Do this for them. Aaron and his sons, Aaron and his sons are to go into the sanctuary and assign to each man his work and what he is to carry. That's the Lord telling Moses what's going to happen. Um, David McCaslin is our author, writes this today. While in college, my friend Charlie and I worked for a furniture store. We often made deliveries accompanied by an interior decorator who talked with the people who had purchased the furniture while we carried it in from the truck. Charlie and I often wish we had the decorator's job instead of ours. In me. Yeah. During Israel's 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, three clans from the priestly tribe of Levi, same tribe, tribe of Levi, these three clans, the, the Kohathites, the Gershonites and the Merorites were assigned the job of transporting the tent of meeting, the tabernacle. It was like a rolling uh, revival, a tent revival, guys. It had to be put up, taken down. There was jobs, there was duties. Um, they put it up, took it down, and carried it to the next place over and over. Their job description was simple. Carry the things assigned to you, period. Ooh, people. I wonder if these custodians ever envied the clergymen who offered sacrifices and incense in the sanctuary. But both assignments were important and came from the Lord. Oh, my. We don't always get to select the work we do, but we can choose our attitude. True story. How we do the job God gives us reveals our service to him. Amen. And I will add another scripture to this video. Um, I forget where it's at, guys. I'll find it, though. It says, no matter what you do, I'm paraphrasing, no matter what you do, no matter what your job, no matter what task assignment you're given, do it as though you're serving the Lord and not man. You have that mindset, guys, no matter what your boss at work may tell you, but if you're acting like you're just serving the Lord, trust me, it could be the worst job you could you could take. And for example, Situations I've been in where I've been asked to take the trash out, clean the bathrooms, uh, do dishes, work in the kitchen and clean dishes after 150 people by myself. If that's where God wanted me and that's where he needed me and I can have that mindset that God said, hey, I trust you enough to give you this position. Will you do this for me, son? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. But to have that mindset, the guys get it. It's you know, There's days where I, I, you might, I might as well call it envy because that's the name of this devotional today and it's it describes a feeling you know i'll look at some of these people in the ministry and how, how they've succeeded and how but guess what guys they've got 30 you know 20 30 40 years plus on me i, I know that god's going to provide for me no matter where he sends me and i just need to have the mindset god chooses god chooses his people where he wants them he places them where he wants them when they're fit and qualified to do what he wants them to do i truly believe my time will come or god's going to have me somewhere looking at a position that Today, I like might be envious of, like, saying, man, I love to be that guy, you know, traveling, just preaching the gospel and 
you know, drawing in large crowds and just speaking truth and getting people fired up and moving on and hitting the next town. I would love to do that. I really would. And maybe that that's God's plan for me. Maybe it's not. He might have me going overseas on missions. He may have me going to the, the slums and downtowns and, and helping paint and clean. I don't know. Whatever God sends me to do, as long as I have the mindset that it's his calling for me and I'm serving him and not man, praise God. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. But in these human bodies and this flesh, like look at the background, you know, it looks like four people sitting there lined up for an interview. You got three of them, got like a couple of pages stapled together, their resume. And then there's this lady sitting in the middle, got a, a three inch thick a portfolio. And uh, you can see the envy on their faces like, yeah, she probably going to get the job. Maybe she does. Maybe she doesn't. Uh, we talk, me and my brother Dave talk all the time, you know, put, picture this. If Jesus Christ himself went and applied for a job at any local church that was hiring, and he filled out a resume, I'd be willing to bet you he would not even get an interview. Now, I'm not talking about just because of his name. You know, they see the name, oh, well, you're hired. I'm talking about all the things you got to fill out on a resume and application, place of address. Jesus was homeless. He had no, he had nowhere to lay his head. The word says that, you know, your parents, well, I was, my mom was a virgin. I was born from a virgin. Well, you know, what do you do? What's your job? I mean, he had all kinds of jobs. He never stayed in one place. Um, but what's your experience? Where'd you go to school? I, I didn't go to school. Jesus isn't going to get interviewed. But guess what? Jesus constantly was serving the Father. And Jesus was love. He was joy. He was hope. He was everything. The way, the truth, the life. And Jesus spent his entire life here on earth, 33 plus years, give or take, whatever you want to call it, just serving God. And look where he's at now. He's seated at God's right hand. But uh you guys, we've all been there. We've all been given tasks and jobs. And I've seen people just flat out grab their coat, grab their bag, and leave. They, somebody ask them to do – and this is in the church. I've seen church events where somebody say, we appreciate you showing up and helping out. This is what we'd like you to help us out with. And people snicker, curl their nose up, and just leave. Guys, I, I uh, it's sad. That's why the church is so broken. We just got to – and look, I mean, you read these study scriptures. These people – guarantee they did not like the job they were given they didn't want to be the one tearing everything down they wanted to be the ones up there you know worshiping and giving the sacrifices and all that but you read the study scriptures it all makes sense so guys just uh you know wherever god has you just be blessed and thankful for what you know if you're retired or wherever you, or maybe you're in between jobs right now unemployed there's still work you can do for god there's always something you can do for God and do it joyfully, gladly, with a cheerful heart, knowing you're serving him. So, guys, a beautiful one again. Just, just please get alone. Read that chapter when you get get a few minutes, two, three minutes, guys. And uh, just uh, let Lord speak to you. Let him search your heart and point out something in you that maybe you don't see and don't understand and realize. And I promise you he will. So until tomorrow, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see what the Lord says then. I love you all.